Welcome to Get Better Basketball Live. I'm Coach DeMarco, and today I'm going to give you a complete breakdown of the Oregon State 131 zone, talk about how it helped them to almost upset a very good Houston team and frustrate Kelvin Sampson. So stay tuned, hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great video breakdowns. Another Get Better Basketball Live is up now. I'm going to take you to the second half with Houston up about 12 points against Oregon State. Houston's going to get a basket in this possession, but what's going to happen over the course of the second half is this 1-3-1 is really going to wear them down and force them into mistakes. As you can see, Houston scores on this first possession, but I want to point out to the fact that Oregon State really extends this 1-3-1 zone. By placing this one defender up here at the point of the zone, and they have their other three defenders set back here, they're really forcing Houston to work the entire shot clock. And even though they score in this possession, you're going to see them make some bad passes and take some bad shots over the course of the second half, which almost allows Oregon State to win this basketball game. The critical mistake Oregon State makes is with about five or six minutes to go, they actually switch back to man-to-man, -to -man, which I think was a turning point for Houston. They get a three-pointer on that possession. And then throughout the rest of the game, they actually grab some offensive rebounds, which was a problem for Oregon State the entire game. I want to point out this defender on the point of the zone. See Coach here with his arms out, signaling for players to get their hands up. And if you look at this zone, he's really forcing this offensive player to one side of the floor. They're hoping he'll bring it up here into one of these two trap spots just over half court or just before half court but it doesn't happen in this case. He's going to actually reverse the ball. Tough pass, almost a turnover here. And I actually think this defender, because there's three players up here, could have maybe cheated this pass a little bit more with nobody else on that side of the floor. He doesn't. They get the pass in. They decide not to trap. Going to get another pass over the top. And you see in the middle here. Now, what I think is the turning point is when Oregon State actually goes to a really tall player, about a seven foot one player in the middle of the zone. I don't think you have to have a seven foot one player to play this zone like Oregon State at the high school level. It might be one of your taller players on the team. A lot of teams tend to put a taller player on the baseline. And I like what Oregon State does here. They put a quick player that can get back and forth on the baseline, which is something I like to do in a one, three, one zone. And they put their bigger player up here to kind of defend the triangle. Some coaches do it that way and other coaches might not and might tend to put a bigger player on the baseline to get out on these long closeouts with length. Um, but Oregon State doesn't do that. I really like it. They force Houston to make several long passes. Eventually with about eight seconds left, they're gonna hit a three pointer here. But as we take a look at the next possession, you're gonna see them really force Houston to work again, move the ball back and forth. They're going to take a shot with about one second left here, off balance, tough shot, and they're going to miss it. But as we take a look at this second clip, you're going to see Oregon State force Houston into some really difficult passes. I actually think this defender could be a little bit more aggressive on the wing um, he doesn't want to give up anything diagonal inside, but with this player in the corner and this defender doing a nice job in the passing lane, as we'll see here again with the deflection, I think that this defender could have been a little more aggressive outside and put a little more pressure on the ball. We'll see that as the game goes on. And although they don't necessarily get a stop in this part of the possession, because they end up following on a rebound, you can see some really nice rotations. And in particular, this point player does a great job getting his hands in the passing lane and keeping the ball to one side of the floor. And this is a tough shot by Houston in this situation. As I bring it back, I mentioned this point defender. 
you can see he's trying to angle the ball. And in a good 1-3-1, one, one, when the ball's on this side of the floor, you want to keep this player on the side of the floor to either trap them, force a tough pass. You want to make it as hard as possible for them to skip the ball across the court, forcing the zone to rotate. And this player does a really nice job getting, showing his length, getting his arms out, getting his hands up, and making this a really tough pass. I do think in this situation with this player in the corner, this defender could have cheated out and maybe got a steal here because this defender can help in here and these defenders should be talking. And if by some chance he could make a skip all the way to the corner without them deflecting it, I do think this defender has time to recover. So would have liked to see a little bit more aggressiveness here, almost like in a diamond press or really any full court press where he's an interceptor and he's playing two and leaning towards the obvious pass. This is the obvious pass. It's the easier or shorter pass, or really this pass could be as well. So he should be cheating this way a little bit. We'll see on the pass, nice ball fake there too by the offensive player. He gets there a little bit late and they're gonna skip it back over the top again one more time. Nice deflection, making everything tough, nothing easy. Aside of the foul at the end here, Really nice job by Oregon State. I want to let this play through one more time at full speed and watch the nice job this defender does up at the top, trying to keep the ball on this side. Good rotations for the most part. Nice clip to show your team if you play a 1-3-1 one, one, or you want to play a 1-3-1. One, one. They do a lot of good things except for the foul at the end. We'll come back here, and I really like the angle in this clip. You see another lob pass here by Houston. Here's the point defender. You have your one two, three across, and you have your one down below. And they're going with the two, one, two alignment against the one, three, one, which is pretty typical. And it kind of forces these players when the ball's on this side of the floor, this defender has to drop and help underneath. Although this defender might be able to also play this player. But typically when the ball's on this strong side, the low man has to cheat over to this corner a little bit. And this defender has to slide down. So Pretty typical alignment against the 1-3-1. One, one. But I think Oregon State does a really nice job here in their rotations. And I know they pick up a foul in this possession. But I think we have to look at over the course of the game as they play this 1-3-1, one, one, they're going to start to really frustrate Houston and force turnovers. And yes, this is a foul, but they're putting that pressure on the basketball. They're going to start to turn the ball over as they get frustrated. And it's going to allow Oregon State to get back into this game. So here's a forced turnover in this possession. And we're going to see the defender this time, instead of pressing up on this player a little bit, he's going to switch it up and sit in the middle. And he's going to take away this cross-court pass. And it's going to frustrate this offensive player into trying to force the ball inside a long pass that's going to lead to a turnover. One of the other things I want to mention as we watch this is this player does a nice job, but when they go to their taller defender in the middle and put him at the free throw line, I really think it makes a difference. Some teams put their taller defender on the baseline. Some teams put the taller defender at the free throw line because he kind of guards this triangle area inside. I think it's better to put your taller player here and a quicker, more athletic player to run the baseline to get from side to side to defend those corner threes. It's what I like to do, and it's what Oregon State likes to do too, as you'll see in this game. So as Houston starts to rotate the ball around as we watch this possession play through, you'll watch for this player right up here who's going to force that ball inside, and it's going to lead to a turnover. So he tries to make that quick pass inside, but I think he made this pass out of frustration because it was harder to make these passes across the court, couldn't get it to the corner. So he really tried to fire it in there, you know, into the block. Again, if that player is open, you can get it in there and get a layup. It obviously could frustrate the zone, but I feel like they're making that pass and forcing it because Oregon State has taken away some of the easy passes that they were making earlier on. As you watch it play through one more time, you're going to see that pass across. We're going to see another pass come across. And eventually this player is going to get frustrated by the challenge of making those passes across 
and he's going to try to zip it in there through the zone. This defender right here would have recovered had he have caught the ball in that situation, and this defender would have rotated. So not as open as it might look when he makes that pass through the paint. But either way, it forces a turnover, which is what Oregon State is going to use to get back in the game. In this possession, you're going to see the frustration mounting for Houston as they just keep lobbing the ball back and forth from side to side, not really attacking the zone, and eventually not quite a turnover because the defender kicks the ball, but they're taking away all those angles and they're making every single pass so difficult. And I know I mentioned earlier the taller player in the middle that will come in a little bit later in the game that does a nice job. This is a pretty good-sized player as well. But just hands up, being active, and not letting any of those passes come through into the middle. And really, Houston is just passing the ball from side to side, not even looking to attack a seam and then dump into the baseline or go corner, baseline, opposite, swing. They're not making those passes that you see against the 1-3-1. One, one. I think a lot of that is because Oregon State is doing a nice job forcing them to make passes making it difficult for them. So as we watch this clip, you can see about four minutes have gone by. They're still down 12, but they're going to start to chip away at the lead. In, the, in this possession, they're going to force a tough shot and grab the defensive rebound. But just want to point out the rotations. On these passes across, this player now is kind of sitting in the middle. They could actually trap with this player and this player out on the wing. They could trap the corners with this player and the bottom player or this wing and the bottom wing. They could trap this uh, player on the opposite end with the wing defender and the top defender. They're not doing that, but you could do that in a 1-3-1. One, one. Some coaches will call 13 red, and that means that they want to uh, trap the ball situationally just to keep teams off balance. But you see the basic 1-3-1 one, one rotations here. And Oregon State is doing a nice job in these rotations. They're so good that they're going to force some tough shots and really get themselves right back in the basketball game. Five seconds left, tough three-pointer, and a foul by Houston. As we watch this through just one more time, you're going to see a nice job by Oregon State in their rotations from low to high. A lot of good communication. This defender jumps up now, and they're doing a really good job really keeping the ball out here on the perimeter and forcing Houston to take a really tough off-balance three-pointer here. And Calvin Sampson was clearly frustrated with that possession. Another frustrating possession here for Houston as Oregon State continues to put pressure on them on the perimeter. Nice job getting their hands up in the passing lane, rotating, and really forcing Houston to keep the ball out on the perimeter. Another good possession here by Oregon State in the 1-3-1 one, one, as they cut the lead to eight points with just under eight minutes to go in the game. You'll see really solid rotations here. Players dropping into the paint when they need to on the weak side, then closing out to the basketball. The point defender is getting his hands up, his legs up, and really forcing Houston to keep the ball on the perimeter and pass the ball from side to side. You're going to see it in this possession. They don't let Houston get into the gaps. They don't let them penetrate into the zone. The ball can't get into the corner. And they really just keep the ball outside and then eventually pass the ball and almost turn it over here at the end of the possession. We'll watch this play through one more time at full speed and really watch Oregon State do a nice job rotating, getting their hands up, trying to keep the ball on that side. Even with the screen, it's tough to get through. A uh, good clip to show your team if you play a 1-3-1 one, because one, they do a nice job rotating and really putting pressure on the basketball and keeping it out on the perimeter. Almost a turnover, but a lot of pressure on the ball. Now a four-point game. Oregon State's on a 10-0 run in the last two and a half minutes. Houston finally gets the ball into the corner after passing it back and forth, and they do get a three-pointer in this possession. And I think where Oregon State went wrong is really, I think, one, allowing that pass to happen to the corner, but also the bottom player in the zone. I'm going to freeze it right here. So this defender needed to get out there a little bit quicker, but also get his hand out. He's trying to get his hand on the passing lane, 
but this defender should already be making his rotation. So a little bit of a lapse here, but I really think the turning point was when they went back to man to man, because they're going to still chip away at this lead, even though they give up a three pointer here, this defender needs to rotate down. looks like they're trying to go to the corner and then screen and maybe corner inside. This defender doesn't get out quick enough. So he ends up taking this three point shot. Last possession I'm going to show you here by Oregon State. They end up going back to man-to-man -to -man after this possession, and I think that hurt them. They give up a three-pointer, and then after that, Houston gained a little bit of momentum. But I want you to see this possession because I think Oregon State, again, does a nice job. They got this player being long, really trying to angle the ball to that side, close in on it. They're making it tough. They're forcing Houston to lob the ball over the top. Each lob pass, two or three seconds coming off the shot clock, and they're really forcing Houston to try to initiate action when they're really uncomfortable. They can't, they don't feel like they can get into the zone between these players. The passes to the corner are tough. Oregon State really did a nice job making Houston uncomfortable in this game. We're going to see that pass again over the top one more time. And then this defender off the screen has to come out and close out. Offensive player turns the corner. But, you know, one, two, three defenders around him. I think this is a pretty tough shot to make. So you can see as the game went on that Oregon State and the 1 3 1 zone really put a lot of pressure on Houston. Uh, this possession's a really good example, but we saw it right from the get go. Tough shot here. Good rebound. Oregon State has a chance to upset Houston. As I watch these film clips, I can't help but wonder what would have happened if Oregon State had come out for one more possession in that 1-3-1 zone. You could see that Houston was clearly frustrated from that 12-minute mark when it was a 12-point game down to the 5-minute mark where they chipped away slowly at the lead, cutting it to 5 points at that point in the game. I feel like Houston was really forced to pass the ball from side to side out on the perimeter. They weren't able to attack the gaps. They weren't able to get the ball into the corners and they certainly couldn't get the ball inside. So credit to Oregon State for the job they did in their 1-3-1 zone. I think a lot can be learned from these film clips, including the job the point player does in this zone really making those passes from guard to guard or slot to slot up at the top, extremely difficult and getting his hands up in the passing lane and getting some deflections as well. The players in the paint did a nice job rotating out and communicating with each other. So a lot of good pointers from this one, three, one zone that you can use with your team and show to your players. If you like this episode, then make sure you show me some love by hitting that like button down below, turning on your notifications, and subscribing to my YouTube channel for more great video breakdowns each and every week. As always, get better every day.